When Tawanda Kanema realized that his hometown was completely absent from Google Street View, he took matters into his own hands and photographed 2,000 miles of Zimbabwe. Today I'm chatting with him about the power of photography and maps. So you essentially photographed and put Zimbabwe on the map. So tell me how this happened. So where do I begin? Back in 2016, I'd been in the States for about eight years and I was, I'd gone back um, to Zimbabwe maybe once a year. And the one thing that struck me going back and forth each time was the dramatic discrepancy in digital platforms, what kind of technologies people use every day to get around. And that discrepancy was probably most defined in mapping technologies. The average person is going to pull up Google Maps and you know estimate how long it takes to get from point A to point B. And being in Africa, I always felt like the estimates were so inaccurate. So I was looking for something I could do to help improve the quality. So you saw that there was a need for this, and then how do you go from seeing that to now going around for Google Maps and actually doing this? And how long did this whole process take you? When I think about start to finish, that process took about two years, but the actual mapping, the, the work on the ground took only 14 days. I got involved with uh, the Geo for Good, which is a program run by Google to pass on technology to mapping enthusiasts. And uh, I joined the Street View Camera Loan program, which I then used to borrow a camera from, from Google. That camera allowed me to go to Zimbabwe and do mapping, bringing images that were almost at the same quality as you would find on um, regular Google Maps. How does that feel to know that someone can now log on and look up your hometown and essentially see it through your what was your vantage point. It, it feels amazing to to see that you know people are actually using these maps, and I get emails on a daily basis from somebody who's been able to go down the street on which they grew up. Um, there are people that have not been in Zimbabwe in about 30 years, and so they're able to go back. They're able to show their kids the homes in which they grew up, and. Just being able to establish that connection, that feels amazing. I see maps as a proxy for what we care about. Places, place names. We're thinking about communities that have been left out of some of these platforms. We're thinking about really connecting those, those communities to the rest of the world. When you look at Google Maps, when you look at Street View, along the path, somehow, you have countries that are completely missing. There are about 54 countries in Africa, and right now I think there are about nine or 10 that have been mapped. Two of those were mapped by volunteers. So we're really thinking about how can we bring these technologies to communities that would otherwise not have them. So I just want to touch on, obviously the last couple of weeks have been extremely heavy and I'm sure there's a lot of emotions. How are you feeling? You're in San Francisco, you mentioned. A lot of what's going on now, we have we have known and these are things that have constantly been in the public memory. The only thing that's new is really the scale at which these protests are taking place. I've personally, you know, been involved in documenting some of the protests that occurred in Berkeley over the years. And so being here again and seeing this happen again is a little heartbreaking, but at the same time, it's inspiring to see that people are beginning to speak out and people are really taking the initiative to help push for change. Absolutely. Well, I hope that people like you inspire more positive change and it just continues.